This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. Fifty years ago, San Diego's economy was based almost exclusively on defense and tourism. That changed, of course, in great part due to UC San Diego. Our culture of discovery and innovation transformed the region into a hub for new industries in IT and biotechnology. But as Bob Sullivan, the founding dean of UCSD's Rady School of Management explains, starting new businesses was not enough. To sustain growth, the region needed more. These are all small companies. They are startup types of companies based upon discovery. And uh, what you needed in this community then was the, trans the ability to transform discovery, to do something with it so that it went to the, the communities to have an impact, to create jobs, lead to economic development, prosperity. That's what we didn't have. So the university and business community here, many of them affiliated with UC San Diego's Connect program, pushed for a management school aimed at the industries of the 21st century. These are life science types. These are clean tech, green tech. These are telecommunications, software, wireless types of industries. Bob Sullivan, previously dean of business schools in Pittsburgh, Chapel Hill, and Austin, was tapped to run the new venture in San Diego. Those companies are critically important to the future. We said we would also focus on individuals that have very strong science and engineering backgrounds. In order to be successful, our, our graduates will be able to go into the laboratory, talk to the people that are really developing the intellectual capital. They'll be credible to them. They actually understand the science. They understand what's happening. They can articulate it, but then come out and, the, and they are the communicator and the leader. But between the time that Sullivan accepted the post and his arrival in 2003, the $50 million that had been promised to launch the school disappeared. What I was then told is that the resources were not there uh, and that um, due to you know, changes in the economy that uh, individuals were not able to, to live up to their commitments and that we were starting all over. So the, uh, the committed resources at that time were zero. The community did not give up on the idea. A gift from Qualcomm honoring board member Jerome Katzen, followed by grants from developer Malin Burnham and venture capitalist Bill Stensrud, led to some 300 additional private contributions, including a naming gift from business executive Ernest Rady, putting the new school on solid ground. The Rady School's first master's program was the Flex NBA, designed for working professionals such as Beth Ann Baber, at the time a cancer researcher at the Salk Institute. Beth came with a mission. It was a focus on doing something extraordinary because she, she had a personal commitment because of her, her family circumstance. So while I was working at the Salk Institute, um, my son, who was 15 months at, old at the time, was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, which is a, um, a very deadly uh, childhood cancer. The tumor in her son Connor bumped against his heart. The prognosis at the time was probably less than a 50% survival rate um, based on the size of the tumor and its location as well as um, how, how mature the tumor was, and we did not even know if it would respond to therapy. Because of the high risk of side effects, Connor's parents chose to forego the recommended bone marrow transplant and instead used their knowledge about cancer cells to personalize Connor's treatment with a less toxic chemotherapy, a treatment that worked. Connor, now six, is cancer free. That experience inspired Baber to investigate why so few other young cancer patients had access to novel therapies. By looking at what the problem was, I, I started discovering that the reason um, was is that the, the market size for, uh, for childhood cancer is very small. 
and that companies were not investing in that area. So even though we have a lot of great research that's been done and can be utilized for the children, they're just not being licensed out out of uh, research organizations and moved into commercialization. So Baber and a Salk colleague founded the Nicholas Connor Institute for Pediatric Cancer Research to translate positive lab results into effective treatments. And the business skills she learned at the Rady School helped her shape the Institute to thrive in today's market. As a scientist, she's also been, been a mobilizer of the community to get behind this. And she's really created an institute that is not like any others. It's really a, kind of a shared type of institute with facilities and, uh, and, uh, and researchers that have appointments in, in various locations. TNCI collaborates with companies already studying cancer by providing support for the less lucrative research on children. With help from CureSearch, a foundation that supports the Children's Oncology Group, a consortium of 230 hospitals conducting clinical trials on various types of pediatric cancer. Their shared agenda? Personalizing treatment for each child. We've had so many advances in research over the last number of years so that we're getting to understand at, at the very specific individual level how a disease affects or how a disease manifests. So if you can look at each individual and understand from a diagnostic perspective and then from, a, and, and from that perspective and apply the therapeutic side, you might be able to target therapies toward the, the, the individual's disease rather than sort of a broad idea of the disease. One partnership sponsored by CureSearch is with Althea Diagnostics. Althea has a diagnostic test for a group of cancers in children called small round cell blue tumors. There's five different cancers, all of them are very deadly. Um, if you look under the microscope, all this, the cells all look small and round and they stain blue. So sometimes it's very difficult to determine which cancer it is. And it's not unusual for the child to be misdiagnosed. With this test, there is a 99% accuracy and the test can be done overnight. To move this test forward, it needs additional validation so that we need to secure samples to, to validate the, the test. Because we're working with clinical institutions, we can get those institutions to use the test in their clinical trials. What is very important is that these five different cancers have five different treatment protocols. So it's extremely important to determine uh, which cancer it is so the child receives the right treatment. Today, 46 parents are going to be told their child has cancer. The Nicholas Connor Institute, with Baber at the helm, is on its way toward raising millions for pediatric cancer research, something that Baber says was made possible by the education she received at Rady. The Rady School has definitely changed my life in that it has, has provided me the tools uh, that I needed to launch the Nicholas Connor Institute. And the Rady School continues to support me in all in any efforts that they have that they see that might be beneficial to fulfilling my dream, which is finding cures and therapies for children with cancer. And for Bob Sullivan, he is as confident as ever that his dream for the Rady School of Management will come true. Sticking to our guns in, in this identity, that innovation is important. We can't be a generalist, but we need to play off strengths of this community. And will not only impact this community, it's going to impact the world. These are not local types of companies. A Qualcomm influences the world. We'll create, we will, we will graduate a person that will create a company as successful as Qualcomm. I guarantee it.